Bibles. It's going to be a few minutes before I get there. It'll be Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. I've had a couple of really restless nights. I know many of you probably have felt the same. I, um, last week, I forgot what day it was, but I saw the video of George Floyd, a black man. Please say you don't see color. I've heard white folks say, I don't see color. That's such an ignorant statement. God made us black, white, red, yellow, brown. He colored the pigmentation of our skin. You didn't get a choice in it. He did that. We're all unique. Uh, you know, and each one comes from a separate culture, a different place. I use the phrase quite often, God of the zip code, that God is the zip code of this area. This is uh, when I saw the video as a white man, I was disturbed. I was saddened. I was angry. They got, finally, my attention was gotten. I was moving through social media. I'd never seen so many white, Hispanic, and Asian people hurt for the black community. It was like I, I've never seen a fire like that move through. And I thought, perhaps things will change. Perhaps things will turn around. Uh, I do not believe that all police officers are bad. I have a lot of friends who are police officers. I have friends who are uh, black pastors, who pastor great churches. And many of you know that. And so I, I said, thank you, Jesus. Something's going to change now. And then the paradigm shifted in me over the last three days as what is supposed to be a protest gave, gave room to rioting. And I thought, you had it. You had our attention. Finally, something's going to change. And then it shifted, and I thought, dear God. And it, it's not, it's not a, a black issue, the rioting. You, don't, you see black, white, you see all color out there rioting. They use an opportunity to do it. And I thought about the, the, the human heart. The problem of the human heart is the problem of the human heart. Until it's converted, until it's changed, we're trying to... The only way that secular can deal with what's going on is through... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, intimidation. We have to attack violence back with violence. Uh, hate back with hate. That's what secular does. And, and hate, going back against hate, only produces more hate. Amen. Even Martin Luther said that. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. So it's important to realize that if we're going to see a change, it's got to start with Christ. It's the only answer. And I know for many that sounds trite. I witnessed it. I was a part of it. I was born in North Alabama. Uh, the area I was at was a, at the time was a headquarters of the Ku Klux Klan. I had a friend. I got born again in 79, November the 10th, 1979. And a few months after that, and, and not to go into any sordid stuff, I was working at the Sonic Flipping Burgers at the time. And um, I was being chased by a car hop. I know you can't hardly believe that. But... Uh, her fiance was a guy named Cecil, and I had not, I, I'd only heard of Cecil. I hadn't met him. When I met him, he's a big guy, big white dude, and found out that he was in the Ku Klux Klan. And, uh, and months after I got born again, Cecil got born again. And it was an amazing thing to see. I'm not talking about just, you know, sometimes we say a prayer, but I'm talking about God coming in and changing the heart of a man that was so full of hate toward the black man. And, and we took him, I took him, me and him, me and Cecil became buddies. And I took him to a Shows for Jesus rally. This would be 1990, about 1990. It was in Muscle Shows, H. And all the churches were gathering together. And we were trying to bring unity into the community, which is so important. And we were up in a balcony in a packed church. Church, and a black minister was preaching, man. And you know, he was he was waxing eloquent. He was going after it. He was suited up for the for the for the opportunity to, to preach. And when he finished preaching, he gave an altar call, and Cecil took off running toward the altar. And I thought to myself, my God, he's going to kill him. And I took off after Cecil. I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking he's going to hurt that black minister. And I chased Cecil down to the altar. Right before I could get there, Cecil fell on his knees. Tears in his eyes. 
looked up at that black minister and said, forgive me for the hatred I have had in my heart toward the black community all these years. I believe that without a change of life, without Christ entering the heart, this thing don't change. Amen. What do you expect? This thing's going to, it's secular blown. It's going to keep happening. The, the media is fueling it. Others are fueling it. It's going to keep. I'm just asking you, not only to pray, but believe God for a change in your own heart. Amen. God, if there's anything secret, help me up. Help me find this thing. I mean, you can get mad. You can be angry. Uh, you know, I, I've even seen preachers say, they're not going to come take my stuff. The book of Hebrews tells us that they confiscated all believers' stuff. They were abused. I just read a scripture to you out of the book of, I don't know if you caught it in Corinthians. I just read it to you. It says, uh, uh, for we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jew, Greek, slave, or free. And we were all given one spirit to drink. They've been slaves since the beginning of time. Amen. And you can't just keep looking back and saying, well, I'm hurt. I got pain. We all got hurt and pain. I heard one girl talking about she got hurt in pain because she ain't as pretty as her mama. I'm serious. I had to, I watched Christy Brinkley's daughter say, I got this issue with eating because I'm not as pretty as my mama. I'm thinking, dear God, you got your mama's jeans and you still, and you can get in your mama's jeans? Come on, girl. Somewhere we got to say, God, help me endure. Help me press on. Help me handle the pain in my own life. Can I get an amen? Amen. You, you got your Bibles. You're there. That's all I'm going to say right now. But I'm going to tell you, anytime you mass protesting, I know what protesting is. I've protested. I got arrested. I protested. I got arrested. I protested. I got arrested. I protested one time. I wished I got arrested. They lifted about a 300-pound nun over my head, and I thought to God they were going to drop her on me. That's scarier than getting arrested. Back in the 80s, protesting against abortion. I went to jail. I served time. Many of you know that already. There's a difference in protesting and rioting. Amen. When you disguise it, it's, it's, it's shameful. It's sad. It's very hurtful. Uh, you know what's been in the news lately? The, I saw, again, on social media that they were, op uh, they were opening churches. Our president said open up the churches. They're essential. And, and people were posting, what's so essential about the church? Why you think the church is essential and should be open? Well, and I saw that, and I'm thinking, these folk ain't got no idea. The power and the need of the church, my friend, the church is very essential. Hallelujah. The church is a voluntary gathering of believers for devotion, education, inspiration toward God. I'm already inspired this morning. Hallelujah. Now, I just need to get a little more educated. Can I get an amen? So we're going to press into that. Jesus said, are you comfortable? He didn't say that. I'm asking you if you are. This was, hey, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus said, I say unto you, now this is after his resurrection, he said, I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon the rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matter of fact, this, I apologize, I was thinking this was Mark, no, it's Matthew, and this is not before the uh, resurrection. This is, this is the rock on which I will put together my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. Now, let, let me, let me uh, exegete this for you. Jesus didn't say, Peter, upon you I'm going to build a church. Jesus never built his church on anybody but himself. Amen. He never looked at a man and said, you're going to carry the weight of the church. He didn't do it. He carried the weight of the church. He carried the weight of the world. What, he, what the word was, this truth, uh, uh, when, when he said, this is, uh, no, I'm trying, it was, no, 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 no. Uh, mm, mm. <laughs> Upon this rock will I build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. When Jesus said that, he's talked about his church, his body, um, uh, it, it, forgive me, there's another truth that's hanging in the back of my head. You all never had this problem, had you? It, you know, and I get, it on, I get it on the Internet, you know, where people are watching me going, Lord, help that man. On, Hallelujah. Just thank you, sir. Appreciate the giddy up. Lord, I thank you for your word, that upon this rock, you, the rock, you're going to build your church. It is essential. It is infallible. It will never fail. 
It's going to last for the, if we go another thousand years, it's still going to be here in Jesus' name. Everybody shout. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. you. may be seated. I'll find it by the next service. And it hit me on my way talking to my mom. My mom must say this too. She said, you, you, you're not talking. You sound like you're thinking. You ever heard somebody say, you sound like you're thinking? That, that's me. I sound like I'm thinking. You know, it's something to be on my mind. Christ mandated Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. When we gather, it's that, that spiritual moment when the head connects with the body. Amen. When you get, start getting revelation, you get understanding. The one we took communion, the head's connecting with the body. And then he gave a mandate to the pastor in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. He told us preachers, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the flock or the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Again, it was not built on Peter, but on the blood of Christ. So he tells us, watch after the flock, look after it. And it has not been easy. Now, over the last, when I get to see you here, this is easy. This is a whole lot easier. But not knowing where everybody's at, oh, my goodness. I remember when we did the first service out at the ranch and the drive through I'm peeking in the cars, checking on the people, you know, trying to find out where. It's so good to see folk getting back together. And not only that, the, the, there, all of you, if you would understand this, are ministers to look after one another, to care for one another. We have so many connect groups that you're going to hear. We're starting back up. It's so important. But the church, this essential church, Church, my friend, deals with, it's an institution that deals with ultimate issues. There is no more ultimate issue than death. No more ultimate. All of us know that eventually these bodies are going to wear out and we're going to, I did seven funerals in February. I've only done one since COVID broke loose. Think of that if you would. Amen. It's, it's been crazy, but death. And again, I've done hundreds, maybe even close to a thousand funerals now. I've stood before your friends, your family. I, I've, I've led many of them to Christ. There's a comfort in knowing that this is not all there is, that there is an eternity. And what other group tells you that other than the church? I mean, the atheists can't tell you that. They can't do it. Judgment begins in the house and leads to repentance and changed life. What happened to Cecil? God judged his heart for his hatred that he's had that uh, was unfounded. And he turned around and he said, God, forgive me. He repented of his sin. He made a 180, if you would. Relationships, uh, forgiveness, siblings, adoptions. Uh, I found my family in the house of God. You, you, f you find connections here. You find friends here. There, there's no other group like that. Oh, I know some of you are bar slappers. You know, you go to the bar and you slap one another on the back. But, but it, it, you know, it, but it's still different. Yeah, I, I've, I've been to a few bars in my life. Amen. And I can tell you, I had to sneak across the state line to do it, H. But, but I've been there. And I can tell you this, there's no family like the family of God. Amen. My three children came through the church. Amen. It was in the church. No, all three of my kids were connected through church. Mandy, Josiah, and Judah. And then later, Katie and Jill. All came through the church world. Amen. That's where I found them. How essential is that? Amen. That, that God would bless me. I was never on the list, but God blessed me. And, and I thought about it a long time. A couple years ago, it hit me that God gave me three adopted kids, and I was arrested three times. And then I gave him praise. For the three times I was arrested and not the fourth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Purpose is found in the church. Help it answer the why of life. One of the things I found that in the house of God, I began to find the why I was here. Why God put me here. That he put purpose in our life. Lasting priorities to endure to the end. Identity. Tell me how essential this is. I found out I was a child of God. Amen. That every, the riches of God are mine. That there's an inheritance saved up in heaven for me. Hallelujah. Where do you learn that? It's through the word of God. Acceptance, grace, and mercy. If you knew my sins... If you knew where I came from, if you knew what's happened through my life, you wouldn't listen to me. If I knew your sins and what you've gone through in your life, I wouldn't preach to you. Oh, I should get a little better. Amen in that. The kingdom of God says, come on in, you're forgiven. 
You're accepted in the beloved. Your family. Man, I love you. And what happens when you start going through this change heart? Amen. God begins to shift and change us. Security. When I go to bed at night, I don't wonder if I'm going to hell. I haven't done that in so many years. Amen. I, 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 I've wondered if I was going to jail, but never if I was going to hell. I go to bed with such a sweetness. Amen. Lord, if you take me tonight, I'm good. Amen. I'm good. That's security that you, you feel. That's a part of wholeness in your life. The church provides perspective that gives dignity to mankind. You know, they, 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 there's nothing else. Again, atheism can't do that. Agnostics can't do that. Uh, before I was, when, when I was just a heathen, I didn't understand that. But there's something about the church. It gives, it made me want, made me want to love my dad, my mom. Uh, listen, guys, let me just say this to you. When you are an adult... As a believer, you have a filter on your mouth. When you a child, you have no filter. And what I've been, when, when I saw what I saw over the riots and I heard the language coming across, I thought, these kids, man. I mean, they look like they're 35, 40, but they ain't got no filter. They just, they, they say in words that shouldn't be said, amen, in, in public, around other kids. It, it's so important to understand. The church, the church helped clean up my mouth. One of the first things I knew to start cleaning up was my language. See, your, your tongue connected to your heart. That's your dipstick. And you pull, you, you pull the tongue, you're going to find out what's in the heart. I don't have to be around people long to figure out where they at. All I got to do is listen to them. And I can tell if there's bitterness in there, hatred in there, meanness in there. What happened to love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness with the fruits of the Spirit that God gives you when you got born again? That should be coming out of your mouth, man. Amen. Your patience, your believing for the best. Hallelujah. All those things should be coming out of here. The church provides a moral and ethical compass in the midst of relativism. What I mean by that is everything is just, you know, it's a universal um, I think one of the words that we've been getting bombarded with is inclusion, include everything together. I will not back off the fact that Jesus said he was the way, he is the truth, he is the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through him. Amen. I just Because nobody else has died for me, loved me like that. The scripture tells me he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 1 Timothy 3.15 says, Paul speaking, if I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's house. Amen. Which is the church of the living God the pillar and the foundation of the truth. So I stand here and I tell you that this is the truth that I understand. This is the truth I preach from. I don't try to find any other truth because I don't believe in it. This book tells me what truth is. Amen. Amen. I, when I look at people and, and I understand apologetics, uh, learning how to reason with people according to the word of God. Amen. To help them understand there's no way that Jesus could have fulfilled all the prophecies that he did. There's no way. There's no way he could do it unless God was with him and that he was God. Hallelujah. There's, when you look at the Old Testament prophecies about him coming, all the things that took place. I forget how many prophecies. Uh, his heel was going to be bruised. Uh, his, his friend was going to betray him. Uh, that he, he would give his life for our sins. Uh, all these things. Uh, Josh McDowell used the phrase. He was a great apologetic uh, preacher. And he said, to, for Jesus to fulfill everything that he did in the New Testament would be like taking the state of Texas and filling it up to your knees with quarters. Paint one of them red, flip it out there toward Austin, and tell somebody blindfolded, go pick it up. That's how crazy the numbers would be for him to fulfill what he did. I stand on that, my friend. The church is the only place to find true community, healing, healing, compassion, and love. It is here people care, really care, not because of status or money, but because the Spirit of God is at work, weaving together the lives within the body. The church is essential. 1 John 3, 23, and this is His command, to believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as, his, as He commanded us. Those who obey His commands live in Him, and He in them. And this is how we know that He lives in us. We know it by the Spirit He gave us. You know if you're His. Ain't nobody got to tell you. Nobody got to tell me I'm not a whole vatter. I know I'm a whole vatter. It's just this simple. And I know I'm born again. I know I'm his kid. And, and here's the other thing. You know you pass from death into life because you love your brother. Because you love your brother. And then you also know that if you have a problem with somebody, the Bible says lay your issue down, go find them, and get it right, and then come back and pray. I was at a restaurant over in, in um, Kerrville, 
last week, on, uh, two weeks ago, week and a half, uh, was, was some bikers, and I got into it with a guy, um, the Mater D. Y'all know what a Mater D is? That's a, that's a fancy name for the guy that tells you where to sit. And so he told me, he said, you sat here, and y'all sat there. And I said, I, I don't want to sit there. I don't want to sit over there. I want to sit over here near these guys. No, you can't do that because we got the COVID. You got the, you got the spread. I said, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to sit right here. And he looked at me, and he said, you do you. I said, excuse me? I mean, he bowed up. You, you, you do you. Hmm, what's up? Right. So I sat down. Then my friends came in. We sat down. We started to pray. And I realized before I sat down, I said a few redneck things to him. <laughs> it just can't, it just, just happened, you know. From the heart. Yeah. So I sat down. So we started to get religious and pray over the food. And man, God just kind of spanked me. And I said, hold on, guys. And I got up, and I went around that restaurant, big restaurant, and I, and I finally found him. And I walked up to him. When I walked up to him, I could tell him he tensed up. You know, like, oh, here, here comes that white redneck again. So I tell you that he's not white, okay? So he tenses up, and I, and, and I walk up to him. I said, man, I want to apologize. Because what I said back there wasn't right. I understand you've got a job to do, and I just made it a little more difficult by being redneck. So I want you to forgive me. And he smiled and he said, all right, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. I, I'm learning this stuff. It's all good. You do you. So, so I said, I said, all right. So I went back and I sat out. And the guys said, what was that about? And I said, I just had to clear the air. Amen. Before, before, sometimes I feel a nudge from, from God saying, look, and, and unless you love him, don't tell everybody you love me. Unless you forgive her, don't tell everybody you love me. Amen. This thing works hand in hand. So I feel this pressure at times with God pushing on me and, and trying to get me to the next place. Amen. Next one. Come on. Let's keep going. The church, like no other institute, has provided motivation for the most lasting, unselfish, essential, courageous ministries on earth. Without the church, well, where do you go to the hospital? I went down to Methodist. Where'd you get your heart done? St. Luke's? St. who? What do you think? What, what do you think St. Luke is? Where do you think the Methodist was? The Baptist Hospital. All the things, all the institutions, they started through the essential church. Amen. Without the church, we wouldn't have these essential institutions. Schools and colleges. Our first colleges in America were started by the church. My friend, all the great institutions started by the church. That's where it came out of. You know, the orphans, Sunday school, uh, uh, all those things. Uh, out of uh, the, the, the meeting places that we bring. Uh, boys homes. Home for unwed mothers. All of these. Where do they come from? The church. Star of hope. The church. Amen. This is why the church is essential. This is why the church got to come together. Can I get an amen? We're a safe house. Amen. A place for the homeless. We clothe. We feed. We give temporary relief centers for those who need to be rescued, recovered, restored. Men's halfway. To a lady shelters. And again, I'm not telling you that others don't do it. There's a lot of good boy and good girl clubs out there. But there has never been anything over the last uh, thousands and thousands of years that has affected the earth like the church. Amen. I thank God for the essential church. Saved my life. Gave me family. Amen. Do not, do not, do not put his church down around me. I know what we in other churches do to better our communities. If you have a problem with it, then you get the community of atheists to educate you to care for orphans around the world, to give free medical and dental, shelter the homeless, clothe and feed, show up after hurricanes and tragedies to help those in need. My friend, I love this church. I love his church. I'm talking about global. I love his church. I love what he does. Think about it. If you aren't, you should be thrilled to be connected to the church. Amen. The body of Christ. It, it isn't perfect. And this is the thing. It isn't perfect. Uh, it, it's gone into dark ages. I study a lot of church history. I've seen it go down. I can't go back up. It all has to do with leadership. Amen. But to have, to know that Christ has ne always been the head. There has never been another head. You and I are part of it. That's why it ain't perfect. He said, I'm, I'm looking for a perfect church. The moment you entered it, you ruined it. It hasn't always modeled its message. But whatever is next in order, 
of importance is a distant second. Way down the line. Jesus being the head of it. Amen. Not GM, Ford, Chrysler. Amen. Not the U.S. government. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. The thing I did not get to hear over the last three nights is somebody saying, you know what? Jesus could make a difference in the life of these people. It's only the, and it's not to be preached at. It's to be acted out. Amen. For people to see that. You know, when, when you hear somebody say, see you Sunday, that's when the body and the head getting back together for worship, for encouragement, for inspiration, expression, support, for the carrying out. You made my Monday good. Just seeing you has made my Monday good. I might even make it through Tuesday. We're going to come back in here and have church Tuesday night. Amen. It's first week, midweek. So we'll be back in here on Tuesday. You'll make my Wednesday good when you show back up here on Tuesday for the carrying out of, the, of a God-given role that will be never, never be matched or surpassed on earth. Even though it's the stuff the world around us considers weird and weak. The world considers this thing weird. I did. I thought, you guys, you going to give up your Sunday morning? I'm sleeping. I'm serious. Before I got born again, I thought y'all were the weirdest bunch. And I'd only met, seriously, a couple of real believers in my life. I've met a lot of church folk, but I didn't meet a lot of serious believers who got in the book, loved the book, lived it, loved other people around them. I, that, that's the ones I was looking for. Matter of fact, I'll be honest, uh, um, maybe it was only one. Maybe if we'd had better examples in school. Things would have changed. 1 Corinthians one twenty five. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than man's wisdom. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. Have you ever asked God why he chose you? Have you ever just bowed up and thought you were all that? Only to read in Scripture that God called you foolish? <laughs> right. That God called you unwise? That God said you didn't have a lot of influence? And he said, what I'm looking for is unwise, those with very little influence, who think they're something, I can take them and turn them around. That's what the church does. Think of what you were before you were called. Not many were of noble birth. Not many were of noble birth. Boy, that nobility is a big deal. Where I came from. Who I'm connected with. You know, I won't do the green leaf thing. I don't really want to know where my family came from. I know many love that. They, they think it's good. But did it make you any better? Let me tell you, if I trace mine, it's going to go back to Rahab, the prostitute. Hallelujah. To Bathsheba, who was with David. If I trace mine back, I'm going to use the lineage of Jesus because that's where my DNA lies. Amen. That's where my strength is. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. When I think of what God has done in your life, my life, how God could take someone, I had very little influence in my life. I'm not a very well-educated. People always have to go over my sermons to correct my Spelling. I spell the way the word sounds. So I get in trouble a lot. and People say, well, that poor uneducated preacher. But I have more influence now than I've ever had in my life. And so do you. God did that for you. And he chose you. And he said, I need you to be essential. You are so important to your family. You are so important to the family of God. Amen. So, so important. Hebrews chapter 12. And I close with this. It says, but you have come to Mount Zion. The word Zion in the Old Testament is a word for the church. To the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. To the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. And have come to God, the judge of all men. To the spirits of righteous men, made perfect. 
And this is a prediction that the church one day will be in the kingdom. That God's going, and look at what he called it, the church of the firstborn, born again, whose names are written in heaven, in the Lamb's book of life. You've come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, which means mature. Amen. That's going to be heaven. I get more and more excited about heaven and the family and the friends. How essential is, is the church? Our mission has not changed. We have to win the lost, to integrate the body, to nurture people. It has not changed. To go after, to, for me to get to heaven without my family, to me would be failure. I want my family. I want those connections. I found that there are times that my kindness, my love may not change somebody. But if I can turn them toward Christ, He can change them. He can turn them around. Oh, to be born again. To be born again. To get another chance. Heads bowed, eyes closed. God, I love America. Well, I love Texas. I love this community. What I understand now is I can only affect and influence my world. So I, I choose to make it for the better. I choose for this house to be a home for those that are hurting, for those that are without family, that they find family here. I pray for divine connections. I pray for men and women to give their hearts to you. And God, for that change to come. I will not beg you. I will only ask you. But if your heart has been dark, hardened, unrepentant, and you feel this is a great time to turn some things around between you and Jesus, with heads bowed, eyes closed, put your hand up right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you, young man. Thank you, ma'am. Just hold those hands up. Let's pray with them, would you? Father, change my heart. Come on, say it loud. Father, change my heart. You're watching online. Pray this with us. Father, change my heart. Only you can. You created it. Let it affect my language. Let it affect my life. Let my life start lining up with the Word of God. I thank you that this is the day you made for me. I accept it. Fill me with your spirit. Wash me in your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God crazy praise in here. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The church is essential because you're essential. You're more essential than any store that's opened out there. You're more essential than any police department, hospital. You are essential. <coughs> Amen. The love and the care you have for one another is essential. When we come together, we become essential. It is, the church is essential. Amen. Amen. Well, we have to do things just a little bit different. So if I get our servant leaders to come up very quickly. or if, Listen, if you don't, they don't have to come up. Are the offering, do you have offering envelopes? around you in your pews reach and get one if you're given online you've learned how to do that let me go over some announcements as they're listed okay Cheryl Tuesday night we will have church here amen it's first week midweek we'll also have Wednesday night out at our north campus on Wednesday June 2nd seniors with a purpose Amen. They're getting back together. Uh, uh, that's SWAT. I'm sorry. Let me talk about SWAT real quick. David will be teaching him and Tony will be teaching our teenagers on Tuesday night. Seniors with a testimony. Please come out Tuesday night. Invite teenagers. Connect. David will be reaching out. He already has been. Let's have a wonderful youth service for them. And then a service in here. Uh, let's keep on going here. Also Tuesday night. Not this Tuesday night. Because we're having church. But after that, HD is head over our two or more. Now, this is a connect group. 
And I thank God for this group. You know, I just feel like they're praying for the right things and connecting with the right things. So we want you here. Uh, so every Tuesday night, there's something going on in this church. Amen. So be here on a Tuesday night for prayer. Amen. Also, June the 7th, the Pony Expresso will finally be reopened. So there'll be coffee and donuts and kolaches and biscuits and gravy and all that stuff. Amen. So whoever does those things, whoever you are, I know you know who you are. Next week, we'll be open back up June the 7th. Baby dedications next week. Amen. If you have a child that you want to dedicate, please contact the office June the 7th. June also, uh, June the 11th. Sister Diane, you want to say something about this? You okay? Every service I preach, I look at our widows and widowers here and realize how much your lives changed. To the widows, how much I loved your husbands. I loved them men. Oh, I loved them. They helped build this house. They left legacy. To, to the, the widowers, your wives were such a valuable part. They're like mamas in the house that prayed. Loved, cared. So uh, I had a burden. I didn't have the vision. I didn't know what to do. And that was like three months ago. And Sister Diane and I were talking. She said, Pastor, I'll do it. So it'll, it's, it's going to become a connect group. Each month there will be a connection for you to get together and talk. It ain't just going to be Bible study. We want, we want to, to hear from you. Amen. Maybe I'll even get invited to come in and talk to you sometime. But I'm looking forward to knowing that that's going to be taking place as a connect group. At Los Compadres on June the 11th. That's a Thursday. It's going to be on a Thursday. Amen. Uh, June 14th, we're going to baptize. You've not been baptized. We'd like to baptize you June 14th. Seniors with a purpose are going to get together. That's in a couple of weeks. Amen. Here with the riches, the riches, hallelujah, getting back together again. Uh, look at all this. June 14th, going to take a scooter ride. Zion's Lions Connect Group going to get together. We're going to go to Hot Springs, Arkansas. Spend a couple of days up in Hot Springs. Pastor, I thought y'all just got back from that. I love, dry, I love going through Arkansas. Man, you have never smelled chicken houses like that in your life. Until you go up through Arkansas. Amen. So uh, we're going to be going up even on Sunday right after church. Right after second service heading up. Uh, so there's information there. Get a hotel. And... Uh, it's going to be a hard ride that first day. You know, it's going to be a little bit warm, but it's all about the fellowship. Amen. So if you want to go, and, and we have people that can just drive along. If you just want to drive, you're welcome to do that. Dave, put those in the box, if you would, back in the back. Uh, Lift Bible study, June 21st. Sister Diane Phelan. How's Charlie? He's good. You know, Charlie had a heart attack. Another one. He's got 16 stents already. And then he had another heart attack, but now he's doing better. David Cochran is back in the hospital. That's uh, Patsy's uh, brother-in-law, Terry's husband. He was put back in again with bronchial issues. So uh, that, was, that was three months ago he was in there, so he's back in again. So pray for David, amen, and uh, Barry Johnson. They're bringing Barry home. He's being in hospice. So... Uh, Two weeks ago, we were standing together at his sister's funeral. And then brain tumor, and, and this is where we're at. Without a miracle, Barry will be seeing his sister soon. So let's keep believing for a miracle. Amen? We've got some needs. Kids camp. Kids camp? July 20, 21, 22. Kids camp. I don't know. Do they have anything back there for the, for the sign-ups for the kids yet? 
I know Marley was going, sir? Next Sunday. By next Sunday, we're going to try to do some online for people to sign up online for their kids. We want your kids to come. I think it's what, 6 to 12? 6 to 11? Ages? K through 5th? And even if, you know, we might even squeeze in there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I want to, I want, we got sign-ups in the back, okay? There are, are uh, things for you to get. I want kids, this will be 100 bucks per kid. We're not trying to make money. We're just trying to take care of the kids. So that's about it. You ain't going to go to a camp any less expensive. We're going to have a lot of fun. The pool's being filled right now. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Just got a little, a few more things to get done out at the ranch. Uh, we lost all our camps this summer, I think, except two. So, uh, but we do have some people calling now saying, hey, we lost our camps. Can we come to your camp? So we'll just see what happens as the summer goes. Going to trust God, amen? But we want, we want the kids to come. The Jewels for Christ, again, Sister Diane for details, July 25th. That's way down the road. But you see, it's a lot of things. We're getting back in the groove, amen? Amen. I'm going to proclaim this with you, and then I'm going to just allow Would you stand with me? And then we're going to be dismissed. So, Josiah? Sing us out of here. I ain't, I ain't got a song. Okay, all right. Coughing too much. How you doing? Natalia, how you doing? Married woman? I wasn't supposed to say that. My bad. They get married in August. August 8th. It's all, it's good, it's good. It's all good. We're going to celebrate it. Hallelujah. Celebrate it. As we give today, this is what happens when I stay up here too long. As we give today, we believe in God for? More money? Sales and commission. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Bills paid off. Settlements. Inheritance. Rebates and returns. Debts demolished. Royalties received. Favor and success to the kingdom. Amen. Y'all just give on your way out.